Hey there everybody, this video is actually coming out really, really late. The video that you're going to see, that you're actually seeing right now, was taken almost a month ago. Um, and this is a video just about how we collect our potatoes, put them down in the in the root cellar. Not much uh, deep information, just a quick video, so I hope you enjoy. In our attempt to be self-sufficient, we plant a lot of root crops our basic starch in the winter. So we have pretty much all of our own milk, all of our own meat, and we try to produce all of our own starch. Potatoes, carrots, beets, those are a really good root crop. They store well. And one of the things that we do differently than maybe a lot of the Russians that are around us or a lot of people who do potatoes is that we save our largest potatoes for seed crop. So as you see here, we're putting down um, in different size categories. We've sorted them out into basically four different sizes. Um, there's the really small potatoes that we're actually going to eat as soon as possible. Normally those would be left for seed. Then there's the medium sized potatoes that we will eat during the winter. And then there's the really big potatoes that we will leave for seed. Down here in the root cellar, you can see we have the different bins for the different kinds of potatoes. The fourth category of potato that we have is broken or rotten potatoes that will not keep very well. And we will feed those to the pigs um, right, right, off, right off, the, off the bat right away. Say hi. <laughs> As I said, we also do carrots. Carrots is a big crop for us. Potatoes and carrots and beets are our main root crop starches. If we lived in a different climate, I would probably do sweet potatoes or yams or something like that. That would be a good uh, root crop, a good starch. But in our particular climate, we have, uh, we can really do potatoes and carrots and beets really well. So this year our potato crop was really good and our beet crop was really good. I don't know how long it'll take me, but I'm sorting this pile of carrots into the larger ones, the broken ones, and the tiny ones. And then I'm grating and peeling those, peeling and cutting those, running them into the grater so I can put them in the freezer for soups. That's what I'm doing today, and I have no idea <laughs> how long it'll take me. Kirsten, yeah. what's this? Where are we, where are we at? At the big pit where are the, all the food. And, and how long is the food going to last? All winter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at all that food that we have. Yeah. Look at all that food. Isn't that great? Yeah. All right. Potato sticks. Squash, zucchini, and carrots, and beets. And that. And that, and zucchini. Everything. Yes, that everything have. that we have. Do you like it? Yeah. And what's that bag full of? That bag is full of, I think, squash. Let's look in there. Let's not. Aww. All right. So you ready to go back up? Yeah. All right. So even though the majority of the calories that we produce on the farm are definitely produced by meat and eggs and milk, mostly meat and milk products, we of course do have, as you see here, a good supply of starch through root crops. One of the most essential things, if you're going to have a garden, is to have a way to store the produce from your garden. So in our modern day, having a chest freezer so that you can grate and process for food for later use like Rebecca was doing with the carrots, or and especially having a root cellar can be just a game changer as uh, when it comes to actually storing and preserving the food that you produce. So, you know, if I have one piece of advice for everyone who does gardening and actually wants to do gardening on some kind of a meaningful scale is absolutely make sure you have a way to store and keep your produce. As I said, a chest freezer can definitely do that for you, but, but a root cellar, because it doesn't depend on electricity, because it's a very simple and very large scale way of storing food, 
in a meaningful way can be just an essential tool in any small scale homesteading, survivalist, or just backyard gardening, backyard farming context. So definitely, definitely, when you're putting in your homestead, when you're thinking about doing a garden, think about a root cellar. So that's it for today. Hope you guys liked the video and see you next time from our homestead in Siberia. <laughs> and as I say in the YouTube, uh, Russian YouTube channel all the time, do not forget the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it.